Welcome to another session of Ask the Expert on Contingent Workforce Strategies LinkedIn Group. I'm really excited about today. This is a great topic. We're going to be talking about leadership and different aspects of leadership within the contingent workforce uh, industry, but also, you know, lessons learned from our guest, Jim Love from Tapfin and uh, Manpower Solutions Group. And uh, I'm super excited to talk to Jim today. You know, I've known of Jim through industry for years and years and years, had always great, um, great things said about him. And then, you know, online, I started seeing some of his posts and read some of his writing and just really fell in love with the way he presents himself and the energy and the leadership style that he he has. So I reached out and said, Jim, we got to just meet each other. We've heard of each other for so long. And we really hit it off. And so I'm really excited to have you, Jim, today. And thank you for coming on Ask the Expert to talk about leadership. Awesome. Jeff, thank you. That's a just a wonderful intro. And I, I don't feel like I deserve those words, but I appreciate it. And um, I, I totally admire your approach and what you've done and what you've built, you know, the um, as in a career, you know, in the contingent space and excited to be here and talking about leadership and, um, and all sorts of great stuff. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a joy to be here. Awesome. Well, you know, the topic of leadership can be so broad, but I want to kind of bring mm -hmm. it not only our industry, but also, you know, our industry, of course, is always growing. And mm -hmm. we also suffer from the scenario of the demographics, right, where, you know, there is some leadership gaps, and you're always mm -hmm. trying to develop the next set of leaders for your organization. So, you know, Talking about leadership development in, especially in a large organization like like Manpower and and Tapfin, um, talk to me about some of the lessons learned, some of the approaches you've taken uh, to help build the next generations that are coming through and helping lead the organization as you grow. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, the first thing you said is spot on. Like leadership can be overwhelming at times because I think a lot of folks tend to think of leadership as just a title. You know, oftentimes it's the CEO of this or the CFO. And while those are really important titles and certainly people who are deserving of it, to me, leadership taken in bite-sized chunks is, is, is way more, na you know, na navigable, if that's a word. I may have just made that up. But, uh, <laughs> but there's, you know, there's a level of, it's, it's the small things that you do each day that, that make a difference as a leader. And um, I learned that I've been at Manpower Group for five years, actually five years this past week. So it's, it was uh, kind of a cool celebration that coupled with my wedding anniversary. So May, May 15th is a big day for Congratulations on Thank everything. You. You. Great stuff, right? And uh, my social media was just like, every day I had a new thing to say. Uh, but um, I, I've really found that, that you know, we, we, we have approachable leaders. We have people who, who, who take time. And, and the thing I realized really quickly when I started is I needed to take time and actually reach out to folks, you know, and not be afraid to do so. And sometimes when you start in a new role or, you know, particularly within this contingent workspace, that's that's a lot. You know, there's a lot of folks who have been around for a long time and that, and that could be overwhelming and, and maybe intimidating. Um, but recognizing that they really are a family, you know, when it comes down to it. And people want to help each other out. I think we we all too often think that like folks are in their own world and not willing to offer a hand. And that, that couldn't be further from the truth. And um, I found that when I reached out to, to these people, whether it be at Manpower Group and Tatfin or just, just along the lines of, of the contingent workforce space, folks are willing to give their time and energy. And those two things are the most critical that they have, frankly, is, is time and energy. And reaching out to those people and aligning just, on like where I wanted to go and some of the values I had and, and how I really saw those played out in a lot of the leaders that I met um, was really gratifying and validating yeah. that I was in the right spot. And um, so my, my like That's advice- That's really is, cool. And it's funny yeah. you say that, that leaders, good leaders should be approachable, right? And mm -hmm. I've always thought, and I was very lucky in life that I had a relative, an uncle that did very well. And so, you know, you always feel, you always think of leaders and successful business people and stuff like that as untouchable and they they live in this ivory tower. And I was very lucky that my uncle was growing up because I saw him just being my uncle, right? And mm, yeah, leaders are people too. Yeah. <laughs> and they all wake up in the morning and generally put their pants on one leg at a time like all the rest <laughs> of us, right? Yeah, so exactly. it's pretty cool. And if you think of it that way and have that impression, reach out, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, they say no. 
mm-hmm. to the, the the meeting request or whatever. Right. But other than right. that, you learn, and and that actually is an amazing trait in leaders to be approachable. But on the other side, it's also amazing leadership development, right? Where mm-hmm. being approachable and having teaching people to say, "Hey, the door is open, reach out," mm-hmm. then to be able to have mentorship and and talk to leaders and learn from them is is an amazing it's, thing. It's critical. And I've actually never met a leader who said no to a meetup. You know, like they they typically want to help. And to your point, Jeff, like I love you know that they put they put uh, you know their pants on one leg at a time. Like we 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 are all in this together. You know, and that sounds like a cliche thing to say, but. I, I've really found that like it's it's the truth. Like like the you know those leaders have messed up and they've learned lessons and that's how they've gotten to where they're at. And I've certainly messed up. I'm probably going to mess up today. You know, and and you own it. And I think the, the what I found is the more authentic you are, particularly with those leaders, and as a leader of yourself, too, you know, we're we're all leaders. We're all everyday leaders, and we can choose to be. Um, the more authentic you are, the more relatable you are. Um, oh, that's amazing. And so, are there other more formalized? leadership development things that you've seen or followed or manpower has or different things and 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 why i ask this is you know from a from the audience perspective some are Mm -hmm. different size organizations and they may not have the investment ability that larger organizations is but you know there are things you can start to formalize to Mm -hmm. not only have informal mentorship programs where you that kind of thing that we just talked about, but is there anything else that, that you've seen that helps develop leaders? Yeah. You know, so I'll give, I'll give two responses. One's like very personal. And then the other one is kind of more like what I think most companies offer. So the first one is something I do um, I, I, like every, every year essentially is that I, I pick a new mentor. So I, I kind of like, Go, go throughout my network um, internally, right? And, and decide where do I really want to go? You know, and what do I need to know? And who's someone who's doing this really well? And I've done now, I'm on my fourth person, right? This this year and, um, and email them. And I'm like, hey, I really admire the way that you approach your work. Um, I think what you do is awesome. And I would love to learn more. And my goodness, Jeff, no one says no to that. <laughs> like if you, if, if you present it that way, it's, it's great. And so I've gotten a chance to really intimately connect with some of our folks who I admire their work ethic, and then they're more vulnerable as a result. And when we come, you know, you go from that into like maybe, maybe a, a kind of an important business meeting or, you know, whatever it might be, there's, there's a level of, you can be real with them. And, yeah. um, and so I've, I've done that. That's something anybody can do is, is reach out um, like end of December, early January, when things maybe slow down a little bit and you, you can kind of find the time for reflection and think about who's doing it really well, or someone who's totally different than what you're at. You just want to learn from them. And, and um, that's been sort of the basis of my, I, I would call it informal mentoring. I've kind of made it like a process for myself, but it helps. And I, and I pick someone new and kind of go with it. And then the second one from a more probably more formal standpoint is I, most organizations offer, um, whether it be like a business resource group or something along those lines where something exists and you can go into a group that's um, affinity based, you know, wh- whatever it may be of something that you're really into and start meeting leaders like that because you come from sort of this niche area that they already have an alignment to a value that you possess or something that you're very into and a passion, right? Um, that I call a voice. Everyone has a passion and a voice. And um, so find that and, and, and find opportunities in your organization to do it. It does take a commitment, you know, to make that happen. And if that doesn't exist, by the way, you can do that. You can talk well, to that's HR. What I'm saying. It's, yeah. So talking about authentic leadership, like what is it like, I, can we formalize the definition if maybe, maybe not? Uh, yeah. And then what are some of the things you can do to, to get there? You know, and I love it. So I, I, um, the, 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 the like two word answer for, for, you know, authentic leadership, like authentically you and whatever that is, is, is what, is what, you know, so there's a level of, of, of authentic leadership. And this is obviously I could, I, we could do a, a, you know, a three hour show yeah. on, on this. I just love this topic. And really what I've found is at the core of authentic leadership, it starts with a level of self love. And that may sound like boastful of like, I love myself, you know, but it, it, the, the minute you do that and find a level of confidence um, within you and know that it's you know okay to fail, you know whatever it may be that that, yeah. that you need is when you can start spreading that on to to people around you. But the the best leaders I know, particularly in this space, 
are ones who have a level of confidence that's like off the charts and not like an arrogant level, but a level of like, hey, I'm 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 good at this and and I want to help people also be good at this. And, and they they spread that. I can think of like five leaders off the top of my head. You're one of them who who have this <laughs> level of you just you 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 know what you're good at and you've been around for a while and you're also willing to help people get there. And you have to start with that. Like so I think it, particularly in our industry, there's um you know, it's easy to compare yourself to people, you know, uh, to people who have been around for a long time, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, but what I found, we, you know, we have our own trajectory. So like the only person you should really be comparing yourself to is the person you were yesterday. And that's yep. it. That's the only, that's the only applicable comparison because the rest is apples to oranges. So if you focus on making yourself better each day, and that may be one small thing, you know, that may be reading one more article, right. Or some doing something that's different and, and you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself getting better and better each time. But this um, authentic leadership is just so critical because people, you know, I know we've talked about this a little bit ago, but people just really don't relate to, uh, to someone trying to be perfect and they relate to you. And, and who you are and the authentic leadership that you bring. And we all have that in us. And I know a lot of folks in the space that, that do it really well and some who are working on it, right? And, um, and I, I'm working on it myself, right? But it's, it's, yeah. it's one of those areas where if, if, if you can really get to a space where you feel uh, you know, comfortable and confident as yourself and, and certainly have the learnings along the way, good things are going to happen and success will follow. And people, people gravitate towards that. They gravitate towards folks who are true to themselves and, um, and, and you know, want to give off their sort of authentic aura, if you will. The other, you know, when you talk about leadership and growth in your career, which, of course, you've done incredibly well, right, over the last few years and, uh, and the networking comes into it um, because networking, you find a mentor, you get mm -hmm. uh, referred to different people, you learn from each other. Like, mm -hmm. so what have you, you know, what's some best practices around networking and what have you learned in, in bumping into people and people that have approached you, how, how they've yeah. approached, what, what different approaches have worked in networking? Mm -hmm. What approaches don't work? Let totally. Me, what do you think? I love it. I love it. Um, the first thing I would say, networking, you know, is such a word that sometimes puts a chill down people's spine. Yeah. But um, we're, we we are all uncomfortable uh, when, when when it comes to it. So like there is, I've never been anyone who walks into like a networking room like I got this. Like you just that's like there's until you get to know people, you're always going to be like, do I talk about the weather? Like what do I talk about? And yeah. so like acknowledge it. It's okay. No one walks in that way, and and, and that's fine. Um, but the other thing I would say is that we I, like, and this is something I used to do a lot is. I felt like I had to get to know every person in the room. Like that was like my personal thing. So I would be like a pinball and go around to a thousand people. And I would walk away with really nothing other than like a yeah. surface level. Maybe I knew the person's name and that's just not, there's no connection there. So yeah. to me, if you walk into a room, let's say a hundred people at like an SIA conference, whatever it may be. Um, if you connect with one person really intimately and get to know them, that's, that's a victory. That, that, that's it. And so don't worry, you know, like, like be in the conversation when it has its natural end. Sure. Be like, it's really nice to meet you. And don't be afraid to do that. Like, Hey, it, yeah, I'm going to go grab some food. Great to meet you, you know, move on, but find out about them, like really walk in and be, be curious. And if that conversation turns into a half hour and you get to know who their kids are, you know, and they have all these different commonalities, wonderful. And if, and if it ends, you know, move on, but don't, don't feel like everyone there is better at it than you because they're not, you know, number one, but, um, but don't feel pressured to, to go around and, and, and meet with everyone. Now, if you find yourself talking to multiple people, wonderful, fantastic, great, you know, do it. But I, I've really seen that, you know, work and then just have fun, see where the process takes you and, and know that you don't have to connect with every single person in, in the room. That's just like a couple of small things I've taken away and, and um, you know, hopefully that helps. <laughs> oh, uh, awesome. Well, Jim, thank you. Uh, like I say, your energy is addictive. People are drawn <laughs> to it. I love it. Um, it's been such a great uh session and having a conversation has been great so thank you for your time today i know you're a busy guy and got lots of stuff on the go but uh again uh this has been awesome thank you jeff thank you it's an honor to be here and i'm, I'm just so appreciative of all that you do you know and, and i'm excited to keep this relationship you know moving forward and uh really thankful for the chance to come on today so th thank you so much so fun thanks